We've got a character with a 2D dash and roll slide mechanic already in place, and you can see how we did that through the links in the description. Next we'll add a custom multi-jump that we have full control over. But we also want to be able to jump off of the wall while we're wall sliding, and right now uh, we can't do that. If I press X nothing happens. And if we... let's just bring them down. Uh, if we add a double jump height, then it'll be able to double jump. So jump and then jump again, but not a third time. Um, so that would work kind of. So if I do two jumps here anyway, I can't jump at all now. But I want to always be able to jump if I'm touching the wall or the ground and stuff like that. So we're going to make our own jump. So instead of wiring that into the jump over here, we're going to have another signal coming out of here for the X button. And this is a pulse when you start holding X. And we'll have that go into another chip for the jump. So this is when we want to jump, and this is the control. There we go. Wire that in, and now we can close that and not worry about it. So right now, when I press X, nothing happens at all because we're not we're not actually doing anything with it. So you can actually just use a mover. Uh, if we get a mover, then this is affecting the puppet as before, and then on the grid we'll have it pointing up like that, and we'll have it full movement strength but no damping, so it will just kind of um, suddenly shove us up like that uh, when we tap X. So let's try that. So I'll press X, and it's doing a very tiny jump, so let's edit that somewhat, and I'm going to, to make it remote control again, so I can just test it from here, that's not too bad. You can adjust this to however you want, of course, but now the problem is, uh, we'll change that to, now the problem is, I can press it in the air as much as I want, so I can just fly around basically. Uh, so we want to limit that as well to only be able to do two jumps from the ground. It's going to work very similar to, similarly to the dash basically. So let's go back to the dash and copy some of that out. So we've got this counter, and while the counter isn't full, we're allowed to jump again, uh, dash again. So we'll copy that in here and wire that into the jump to disallow that. And every time we actually jump, we'll add to it. Um, and we only want to have a maximum of two, so we can jump from the ground and then jump in the air. Um, and it resets when we are touching a wall again. So I think for now here, because it's kind of like a universal thing, we've got uh, affecting all these different things. So. Um, let's just copy that over there, uh, touching, should reset the counter, okay, so now I should, I'll, I'll have a uh, display, have I still got that display over there, Don't need that. so this display will show us how many jumps we've had so far. And only when we are touching the ground or the wall again are we allowed, it, does it reset that number and now we can jump twice again. So that's sorted and it's cool that the way that it works is that puppet interface with the different outputs like for the jump descent and so on. That just works based on is the puppet in, in the air not on the ground and if it's moving up then we are jump ascending and if it's not moving up or down, it's jump. It's at the jump peak. And while it's moving down and in the air, then we are jump descending. So you don't need to use that jump input on the puppet interface for it to animate like that. It's still got these nice animations. 
even though we're doing our own custom jump. So now we can kind of do a jumpy jump all the way to the top. Ooh, ooh. Yay! Um, <laughs> and we fell too far. So that's actually one of the problems built into Dreams. There is this idea of a maximum fall height, which is defined. It has like a default value, but you can define it with a global settings gadget. It has all these special settings for the entire scene. Um, and one of them is um, adjust fall height. So for each of these, you have to turn on the switch and then now it actually sets the value. So it's currently at 10 meters and presumably that's taller than 10 meters. So if we just drag this to max it out, let's see if that's enough. Um, and I'll put this up here so we can drop off the side. Cool, so that's fine. So what it does is it checks to see if the puppet is um, has something it can collide with within this range while it's uh, falling. And if not, then it assumes it's going to die. Uh, the camera stops following it and things like that, and you can't control it and things. There's actually a output from here called fell out of scene, which is what that corresponds to. And it, it, um, it triggers the die stuff going on with this controller sensor, which will respawn and so on. So I'll just remove that as well, because we won't need that. Uh, cool, so now we can just fall forever and it's fine. Or for 100 meters. Okay, I've just uh, added like a ceiling thing um, to check to see how it affects the um, double jump. Or the, yeah, the double jump and, and the um, dash and stuff. Um, and there's actually a problem where it kind of replenishes that stuff because we are colliding with something. So now I can just like infinitely hover right at the ceiling, uh, which isn't ideal. So let's try and fix that. So we want to know if we're impacting something and there's something that we're impacting on a certain side. So we don't care about the top, we only care about the left and the right and the bottom. So if we just use a trigger zone, or a few trigger zones, in fact. So, got one trigger zone checking just below the puppet to see if there's something. Uh, we use label and it should be collidable. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. And let's just move that around. Okay. And so that's on the bottom, and then we want one on the left, and one on the right. So if any of those are triggering, then um, then we want to care if we're impacting something. So if we uh, we just put these into a chip, and that as well. Then we'll wire these to power the impact sensor. So the impact sensor won't do anything unless we're actually next to something we, we care about impacting. I think that's um, detecting itself. So we need to, that's got a friend label. So we need to ignore the friend label for these trigger zones. So that it only cares about um, the actual walls and stuff. So. So it's not finding the left one. That's because the trigger zones are moving around when we're facing left. There's a trigger zone. Let's go over here. Yeah, now there's a trigger zone like there and there and there. And we actually want it to be left and right always, uh, regardless of the orientation of the character. So I'm going to adjust how this works. So uh, we'll still want to power that on and off. Uh, so we'll use a node to do that, but these should just follow the player around. Um, so I think I'll do that and make a copy of that. And you just want this to teleport to the player at all times. And this means it'll ignore the um, rotation of the player because we're only following the position. Cool. And then 
and then we can just put these in there so let's just have another node out here so it's a bit more tidy like that okay and then um, we'll adjust these zones to be over here now so one below and the center of this block will be at the player so I'll do that in the center of the block and then the one on the left one on the right and we'll have those in as well okay okay now it's working properly yeah so we can still like do a um like an initial one but then if we hit our head on the ceiling we can't just keep on floating by um so that should be sorted uh we'll just check if the dash isn't reset yeah it's not reset so good stuff